Hi, I'm Guillaume. I'm an analyst at AziTechX, and we're here at the AziTechX show in Berlin 2017. And here we are with the Center for Process Innovation yep. with uh, Dr. Simon Johnson. Simon Johnson. And uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, what you're showing today. Well, we've got a number of different displays here that show the type of capabilities we've got at CPI. We're, we're a technology support organization, so we help companies to understand latest technologies. This is, is an example of um, something called Inkjet Flex technology. So this is a, a printed copper uh, PCB that can be hundreds of meters long. So it uses inkjet printing to print a, a seed layer that then gets plated with an electroless copper plating process. And it's important to say this is not silver, so it could be potentially cheaper than uh, uh, other printing technologies. It's cheap and, and, and it's quick and very easy to do because it's, it's inkjet based. So it means that we can produce hundreds of meters of circuits in a very short time scale. So this is an example of, of a, an inkjet printed um, circuit. So it has some LEDs mounted on it. There's a little crossover here, which is actually a, a rectifier chip. So that's a flexible integrated circuit there with some thin film transistors built onto it. And this is a, an energy harvesting device. So if we put it onto the, uh, the reader there, we would see it light up. Well, if we're lucky anyway. <laughs> there we go. Oh, so it, that's harvesting energy from the NFC field and uh, lighting the LEDs. So there's no, apart from the LEDs, there's no chip, there's no silicon. Uh, no, there's technology. no silicon on there at all. This is a, a this is a printed rectifier device made of thin film transistors. So oh. that's actually fabricated on a, a, fa a, a 50 micron thin film. So it's a, a real flexible integrated circuit. So those transistors, what are they made of? Um, I don't know the details of the process. Right. They're, they're probably, I think they're pretty sure they're a PMOS uh, device. Okay. Um, but they're some sort of standard uh, TFT process. Right. Okay. So that's really quite a nice one. The other display we've got on the table here is a, a giant OLED. So this is a single OLED device, um, very large area, and um, it runs off just five volts. So it's a very simple device to use, um, and we can make very large area devices with this, uh, which is really quite a novel. A novel approach. Right. Okay. Next. Uh, Over here we've got a couple of different gas sensors. So these are thin film gas sensors that have been printed in various ways. These ones? All of these All are, of yes. These. So this is an ethane sensor. Uh, it's a thin film transistor with an organic uh, gate layer that is uh, sensitive to ethane. This is a, a volatile um, organic compound, a VOC detector mm -hmm. for, um, for breath detection. And uh, this is a, a bovine TB sensor. Uh, all of these have been printed using different technologies and um, are used in, in a wide range of different applications. Okay, and why, why, is it, why is it interesting to use printing in this case? The, 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 the overall aim is to try to get uh, costs down and, and uh, fabricate these things in a way that makes them very easy and to integrate into, into other devices. Okay. Um, and this is a, the final one's a printed label that okay. is um, used for temperature logging, temperature and, and humidity logging. So your, your packet of drugs might be contained within this box. Um, this is a, a label that's been uh, logging de temperature and data over many weeks while the, the product's in shipping. And then once it gets to the far end, you know whether your drugs are still in good condition. Right, so what kind of components do you have in there? So This is actually a, a hybrid device really. So it's got some printed crossovers, it's got a printed substrate. But the, and a printed battery, but then at the moment we're making use of conventional silicon for the sensing devices and for the microprocessor. But this is quite a sophisticated processor, it's actually an ARM, so mm. we're not quite there on printing ARM core yet. Although Pragmatic are actually doing that, They're, they are printing their first uh, ARM processors at the moment. Okay. Simon, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks very much.